welcome to a, another update from Gaming Mayhem. Um, you guys may have noticed, been a little <laughs> sketchy on getting updates done. Uh, really, really busy uh, time of year at work, as well as there's a lot of stuff going on uh, with some extended family. So I haven't really had the extra time that I, I hope to have. But this video, as you can see by the title, is going to be a mini tutorial and review of how to select a painting commission service and the you know how to avoid those pitfalls and things to look for when you're selecting a painting commission service this video is brought to you by the amazing Les Bursley now I don't know if you guys know him he has a website awesome paint job he does not take commissions any longer but he's very well known for his um, skill uh, so he wanted me to you know, he offered to do a uh, uh, do a model. Um, we kind of talked about some different ideas, and, and in, in exchange, he wanted me to kind of do a little video explaining a lot of the stuff I've learned and how to look for a painting commission service and what a painting commission service offers. So first, we're going to talk about the plane here. Um, this is a, a fantastic little guy. Uh, I'll take you in to do some uh, 360. The plane. It's a little hard to figure out how to show this since it has the three dimensions, but the pictures I think will really help. You can see all the uh, detailing here. Wanted to do one at least real uh, look at it so you guys can see what it looked like. And then we'll look at the pictures, which are definitely way more detailed. There you go. Now on to the pictures. Now you're looking at the pictures. Uh, the concept of this, of course, my orcs are a uh, Soviet World War II themed idea. Uh, and I use Soviet in a very broad sense because, again, their orcs are not exactly historically accurate. But this plane in particular is designed off the old MiG-3. And I, I always thought it was a cool design for a plane. But, of course, you can see... <laughs> what Les did, which is perfect. He, he replaced the uh, hammer sickle insignias with the orc faces, um, kept the arrow and everything from the traditional MiG-3 paint job, which was a, uh, you know, the white and red, um, and it matches well with my Polish theme Death Dread that, uh, uh, <clears throat> that was uh, done as well. And, and I, I just looks fantastic. I mean, the poor plane looks like it's never flown, but We'll just assume the Yorks know how to make it work at this point, or maybe they just paint it with rust. It's not actually damaged at all. The Yorks just think that looks cool. All right, so we're back now. Um, you saw that absolutely fantastic, fantastic uh, um, piece of work there. There's really not much else to say about it. It looks amazing. Um, the weathering effects are <laughs> stupendous. Uh, you know, and I think Les, Les is one of those guys, and there's other commissioners out there, but he's one of those guys really where there are two types of painting commission services, and we're going to get into that in a second. And he's that, I want some display quality stuff, you know, or I want models that just blow people's socks off. He's not going to be an assembly line type of painter. He's not going to be knocking out stuff for a quick turny army. It's just not going to happen. And that's or we're going to talk about. So, first let's talk about commissions in general. Why does someone get a painting commission? Why do you not paint your own army? There's a lot, there's several reasons. I mean, you got, number one, of course, is going to be time. Painting is very time consuming. I personally really like to paint. I love it. Um, it's, however, I'm a slow painter, and painting already takes up a lot more time than, say, assembling a model or whatnot. Even if you go crazy in conversions, it can still take, you know, anywhere from, from twice as long to ten times as long to paint a model, depending on how complicated it is. And, and that can become a commodity, you know, a, a very precious commodity, especially those people with uh, families, uh, jobs, kids, uh, maybe extended family stuff. Even if you got a lot of school, or maybe you got a job and school. You know, you want your pretty army to play with, but you just don't have the time to paint it. So time is definitely a factor. Uh, the second possibility is maybe you don't feel you can do a model justice. Um, again, I like painting. Can I paint like Bursley? No, 
I, I just can't. I don't have that ability. Um, and as time has gone on, my eyes and my hands aren't quite as good as they used to be. So I'm not as good at painting. I can't get some of the effects I like. Um, you know, maybe, let's say you get something... You know, you, you splurge and buy like a Land Raider Proteus. Well, you want this to look beautiful. You just spent, you know, a lot of money on it. And maybe you don't feel your skills are going to make it worth it. So, again, there's another option for that. Um, then there's people who just don't like painting. Painting is going to require an investment um, as far as money to get all the stuff you need to paint. You got to get brushes, you got to get paints, you got to get thinner, trays, all kinds of stuff, right? Um, and if you don't enjoy painting, it doesn't make sense to buy all that. It really doesn't. And there are people who just don't. It could be because maybe they've got arthritis. Well, then you're not going to have very much fun painting, are you? But you may love playing the game. So what do you do? Um, you know, there's also just, uh, you know, let's say you're getting ready for a quick tournament and you want to turn around an army real quick, then you can go to an assembly line painter and knock out something while you're busy, uh, you know, doing another, you know, maybe you're busy painting something for a painting competition. Who knows? So there, there's a lot of reasons to do that. And it's not, you know, some people consider it cheating or whatever. Personally, I don't feel you should be entering other people's painted models in a painting competition, but for play purposes, that I find that absurd. There's too many reasons why you would get something painted by somebody else. It, it's not a big deal. So, and then you have, who do you use for a commission service? First, and this is the most important thing, as the consumer and the person looking for the commission, you need to decide early on what you want. Are you looking for glass cabinet quality? Or are you looking for tabletop quality? Now, I'm only using those two categories because it's a very different selection of commission painters. Um, there are guys uh, um, that do absolutely fantastic stuff. You've got guys that can turn around entire armies. Um, you know, like, like I've, I've dealt with uh, uh, Rothan out of Poland and, and even uh, uh, like uh, Rolling All Ones in the States where it's an individual guy. He's going to take a lot more time with the individual models. They do not do really factory line stuff. So you're probably going to get a, a higher level of tabletop standard. Now, are these award-winning models? Maybe, maybe not. Now, in my opinion, in my opinion, yes, but they're so far above what I can do already. I'm not a good judge of that. Um, you know, when you're looking at like heavy metal competitions or glass cabinet type of works, you go to such a new level where I look at the, the finished work and I can't even figure out how they made it. So that's first what you got to think about. If you're going to get an entire army done, you're probably not doing glass cabinet. So let's stay out of that realm. Um, that's something entirely different. And you should look at it as if you were having a commission artwork done. And that would be a totally different thing. I, I've had that done and that requires a lot of research before ever pulling a trigger in a completely different kind of level. Again, your costs are going to be way high. So let's talk about getting armies painted or units painted um, or individual larger models, something I think is a much more common thing being done by the, the average gamer. So first of all, you got to look at cost. Everybody charges different prices, but they're all within the same vein. There seems to be a lot of misconception of what something should cost. You know, for example, say, well, I'm not going to pay more than $5 to paint something. Or, you know, somebody said to me they wanted a, they wanted a Bane Blade painted. And, um, you know, but they're like, yeah, but, you know, I'll pay like, I'd pay somebody maybe 75 bucks to paint it. And I explained, that's not really going to cut it. You should expect at a bare minimum to pay the cost of a model to have the model painted. As a rule, as a rule. Um, obviously, if you're doing mass hordes of things, it, you know, it, it might cost a little less depending on <laughs> if you're buying certain GW resin models, it might actually be cheaper. But, you know, that that's a good baseline for a, a average paint job. You're going to start at least at the cost of the model. So go in knowing that. Don't expect to get a quote where you're like, yay, you know, it, it's just not going to happen. If you look even a lot of the uh, Chinese resellers on eBay that have, you know, they're pre-painting models and selling those. Even those are pretty much, you're paying double the price of buying the model. 
and this is from you know <laughs> sweatshops or something so that's a good baseline um then you have to decide you know what level uh, of quality are you looking for and most guys are going to offer varying levels um i know like rolling on ones doesn't he offers his best and that's what he gives and that's kind of make that kind of makes sense um i get where he's coming from you know if i'm painting something and the reason i would never want to paint as a commission painter is i can't do less than my best i can't i can't do a quick tabletop thing i'm gonna keep doing it until i i'm happy with it and you know that's that's important so first you got to decide where, where you're going to go and what quality you want come up with your paint scheming ideas where what do you want your army to look like you can't go to an artist and say hey paint my army i want it to be cool it, it's not going to work you're then you're dealing with too much interpretation find some example pictures um and and, and then contact multiple companies and I always say multiple companies because, you know, e even if you know somebody has good reviews, it's worth contacting at least three, talk to them, see what kind of feedback they give. Uh, number one, before you do anything, get your list. Get a small list of companies, maybe 10 companies you're interested in looking at. Look for reviews. If you can't find a review of a company, ask someone will know there's lots of forums out there um you know i i personally read like daca warseer and uh the warhammer uk forum and you know but i know there's tons more ask somebody has dealt with this company at some point um if no one has ever if you can't find a single word about them then honestly i wouldn't i would i personally wouldn't use them and i would suggest being very leery of doing such a thing so we'll discount those out of your 10. so you let's see you break that down then to five and when you're reading reviews um the internet it has a very peculiar way of being either extremely negative or overly positive what i found when i read reviews is somebody's like oh yeah i used such and such service it was okay that's bad that's a damning statement. That means it wasn't good, you know, it, because again, read your average uh, clickbait headline. Everything is amazing and stupendous. And, you know, as I'm sure you know, if you click on most of that, it's kind of like, oh, okay, whatever. So, we, you know, use that filter when you're looking. Look for very positive reviews. And if there's a negative review, read what it is and, and follow up carefully because one negative review can represent you know a, a good dozen or even a hundred people who never had the courage or the inclination or time or anything to, to bother uh, talking about it so that's also important um and positive reviews as well there should be several positive reviews you know for, for various people and a lot of these painters will run blocks that's another thing current pictures and works they're doing never trust somebody who for whatever reason doesn't have a picture you know that isn't five years old for some reason that's that's really a problem um any quality commission studio is going to have high resolution pictures available that are current and several of them not just one there'll be different products they've been working on um the you know various blogs some of these guys run uh you know they have YouTube channels they have Facebook pages and they're posting all the various projects they're working on at various levels various uh, uh, scales that they've been paid for various size armies different types of games look at all of those and see which one floats your boat the most um, so I, that that's very important to look at the work they're actually creating in a in a modern context not something they did 10 years ago especially with studios studios change painters so when you're dealing with a studio um, and, and again if you're looking for better pricing and faster turnaround you're probably going to be dealing with a studio you need current stuff because that's the people they have now it doesn't matter if uh, you know they had award-winning painters a decade ago because those guys have gone on you know who knows where they are so really look for something current um, which brings us to the next point. Now, when you contact these companies, um, outside, guys that are individual, of course, you're talking to the painter. If it's a studio, request to talk to the painter. 
um, uh, you know, for your project. If you are not allowed to speak with the guy that's actually going to be painting your vision, to me that's a red flag, I say cut him off. Don't bother talking anymore. That's, that's, art is too subjective, too personal, and too emotional to not be able to speak with the person that's going to be creating what you want to see. Um, this isn't, you know, no matter what you do, painting a miniature is not the same as photocopying. I want this guy, you know, this is my typhus. I want my typhus to look exactly like that. One, it's painted by a different person, so it's never going to look exactly like that no matter what. But still, you should have be able to communicate with the person doing your, your commission. This is normal. This is normal in all commission works, whether it be, um, you know, tapestry art, uh, custom curtains, that kind of thing. You're going to be able to talk to the person who's going to create your vision. So that's something very important to ask. Now, timelines. Everybody wants a timeline. Everybody's going to give you a timeline. My advice, take whatever timeline anyone gives you, add 50% to that. No matter what, no matter what they say, add 50%. That'll keep you from being disappointed because delays are going to happen. Uh, if you're got, you know, again, if you're having one model painted, probably not. But any large scope of project, you're dealing with real people that have real lives. Things will happen, and that's a, I think that's a forgivable thing. Um, down payments again, fifty percent I believe is acceptable. I, much more than that, you're getting kind of high. Um, some guys. It, some guys will accept the models as commission. It depends on what kind of models you're sending in as well. You know, if you're sending in, if you're sending in somebody a Reaver Titan, do they really need 50% commission to paint it? You know, because they can always, if you feel like not paying, they've got the collateral to resell. Um, but I feel asking for 50% is very fair because you don't want these. You know, a lot of these guys are busting their ass to paint this stuff, and then so it's like ah. I can't pay for it, or eh, I don't want it anymore. You know, and let's say you send in a, a nice unit, you know, maybe you paid 40, 50 bucks to make the whole unit, but this guy just spent two weeks painting it. You know, that, that isn't fair to them, and I feel that they should have some kind of recourse and some kind of commitment from the buyer to buy it. But again, if you've done your homework in the beginning, you should feel very confident that they're going to produce a nice piece of work. Um, ask about work in progresses. Will you get a work in progress? And this includes a test or demo model. Uh, you know, if you're doing this, a squad of people, right? They should do a model first and send you, hey, this is where I'm going with this. It may not even be fully completed. It could be the base colors with a little bit of a, a detailing to show the palette they're gonna be using and how they're gonna be separating everything. This should not be a problem. Um, all the commission painters I've dealt with, sent me tons of drafts, tons of work in progress, uh, updates and ideas like, hey, this is where I'm going with this. What do you think? Uh, Les, for example, on the plane, he sent me some pictures. He said, I think I went a little crazy with the rust. You know, what do you think? Should I, should I, should I reduce it? Should I do more? And, and again, fantastic. You know, I was like, no, that's great. It's or a piece of junk. You know, this should be look, like something that came from the, you know, the, the junk world from uh, Transformers. I dig that. So it was cool. But again, you have the communication and the opportunity, and this stops problems from happening later. You get a, a, a demo model of a Chaos Warrior, and all those colors are right, and you're like, yeah, I dig that. How about um, you put that silver trim on the helmet as well? Well, then you just saved the painter from repainting a dozen guys or 50 guys as well as getting exactly what you want. Communication is a key. There should be established um, frequency of communication. You know, ask how long, you know, how long in between, you know, how many updates should I get? Will I get an update weekly? Will I get an update bi-weekly? That's fine to ask. And any of that stuff that is personal to you, if you need an update daily, ask for it up front. It may not be possible, but then that would give you a, uh, an answer and where to go for the next thing. So, what do you do when it, your uh, work's done? They should send you completed pictures, and you would either give feedback or buy off. And you get your buy off, you send your final payment, get all your models in. Um, now, there'll be points where there might be some rework, some things you want touched up, and it should be done. That should be the end of the process. It should be very 
uh, well, smooth, and easy. Um, my experience with uh, commission services over the past, over uh, the course of this year, has been very easy and very pleasant. Uh, everybody was very communicative, uh, very easy to deal with, and I. At no point have I think I ever waited for more than a day if I asked a question. You know, even if it's something simple like, "Hey, did you uh, did you what do you think about doing this with this figure?" You know, shoot off an email and somebody lets me know, or or they even call you. Um, so I don't think because there have been uh, bad experiences with commission painters, all commission painters should be damned at all. There's a lot of amazing guys out there. There's a lot of good reasons to use a commission service. And I urge all of you to go out there and, that, that are interested in this to do it. Feel free to ask me questions. If I'm personally you know, aware of a commission service, I'll gladly let you know uh, how they dealt with me. Um, you know, and, and possibly if I don't, I might be able to point you to someone who does. Uh, but also do your own research and talk to the guys. There should be no crypticness to this. In this era of communication, it doesn't matter where the painter is. All over the world, they have access to instant communication. So you don't need to worry about it. This isn't 10 years ago where if one of the guys at your local store wasn't painting it, you had almost no options to get something painted. There's a lot of fantastic guys all across it. Look for the guys who are active on their blogs, who are actively updating stuff. Um, look, you know, look at the companies who interact, who who like to show off their work on a regular basis. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, uh, you guys know that I've been working with Frontline to do my chaos doors. They are not this. Those guys have been really cool. I, I have no complaints about them at all. Um, they're so easy to deal with that it really made me, um, it made me want to get more stuff uh, commission painted as much as I like to. And, and I've been working on, uh, uh, I've been working on some dudes, got some little uh, Damonettes I'm painting here. Um, got a squad of them done. I've been working on some other ones. You know, I like to do it, but you know, they're so fun to deal with. It makes me want them to paint more stuff. Um, Rothhand, that guy out of Poland, if you saw he did a Def Dirt of Mine, I think he's a genius. I, I really do. I, the guy, the guy needs more credit. I am. I was stunned by the work he did. Um, I'd love to get him to do more stuff, and at, in the future, I will. Uh, you know, the, these are things I just found out. Um, and uh, you see my review, rolling all ones. Got to the states. <laughs> he did a great job on, on my my guys. Again, better than something I can do. And and uh, and. Who else says, ah, oh, yes, yes, your oil painted army. Yeah, that's a studio out of Poland. Uh, and, and they did a great, fantastic job. Uh, you know, they, there's a lot of options out there. There's countless more. And I've started to learn more about these, and I, I read a lot of their blogs on um, different forums, and uh, even some of them on Facebook, I follow them. And there's so many of these talented guys out there. Don't be discouraged by one person or even several people's bad experiences look for the good guys and and get your armies painted the way you want them so i really hope this was uh, beneficial to you guys give you some idea of where to start and what to look for when you go for a commission painting service um if you have any more questions feel free uh post them i'll answer everything the best i can and i hope you get some armies painted if you don't do it pay somebody else to do it they look beautiful once they're painted. As you've seen from my bat reps, we're getting there. It's a slow process, but I love seeing a painted army on the field. There's nothing more satisfying than fielding a fully painted army. So until next time, have fun, play the game, enjoy yourself and whatever you're doing, and we'll see you again here at Gaming Mayhem.